Hey guys, today we're actually going to talk about 16 people who influenced electronic music. Now, I'm not actually saying that these are the 16 people who influenced electronic music, just 16 that I came up with for this video. If you can think of anyone that I've left off the list, let me know in the comments below. And let's get into it. Thaddeus Cahill. Technically, Thaddeus Cahill is really the first person to ever make an electronic instrument, and that is the Telharmonium. In the late 1800s, he actually constructed the Telharmonium organ, which was a massive instrument weighing in at over 200 tons. The thing was played more like a pipe organ with the controller sitting in one room and the coils that produced the sound actually took up the entire basement of the hall where they installed the Telharmonium. The thing was located at 39th and Broadway in New York City and is widely recognized as the first ever electronic instrument. Leon Theremin. In the late 1920s, Leon Theremin actually developed the first compact playable electronic instrument and that's the theremin. The instrument utilized radio antennas, and the performer could actually manipulate pitch and amplitude depending on their proximity to the antennas themselves. It actually became quite popular due to its unique sound and portability, and was used heavily to create that eerie lurking sound in 1920s cinema. Bob Moog Bob Moog was an engineer who was inspired by the theremin. He started his first business actually selling theremin kits. With the success of this business, he moved on to create a more advanced and playable electronic instrument. This became the Moog Modular System and was basically the birth of electronic instruments. Wendy Carlos. Wendy Carlos was an early synth musician who became famous for using a Moog Modular Synthesizer to record Bach music. Her album, Switched on Bach, was one of the first albums to reach the Billboard Top 10 that actually featured a synthesizer. And back then they didn't really have the computer to do the sequencing, so I imagine that was really hard performing that music one note at a time. This is only the second time a classical album had gone platinum and really helped to push synthesizers and synthesis music into the mainstream. Don Bugla. Around the same time that Bob Moog was creating his instrument on the East Coast, Don Bugla was doing a very similar thing on the West Coast, creating a similar playable electronic sound device. His device was a little bit different than Bob Moog's as it wasn't actually pinned to a 12-tone equal temperament scale. This was a whole different approach to using voltage to manipulate sounds and became known as the West Coast style. Keith Emerson. The legend goes that Keith Emerson was actually in a record store and heard Wendy Carlos switched on Bach. He was so intrigued by the sound of the instrument that he actually asked the clerk what the heck it was. The clerk showed him the album cover and he realized it was a Moog modular synthesizer. Well, he didn't have a Moog, so he borrowed one from a friend and took it on tour and fell in love with it. And it quickly became a main staple of his musical arsenal. Keith Emerson was a pioneer in progressive rock and a very accomplished keyboardist. And he really helped to establish the Moog synthesizer as a playable instrument and institution in progressive rock music. Giorgio Moroder. Giorgio Moroder really rose to fame in the late 70s and early 80s and is known as the father of disco. He was really one of the first producers to consistently pump out top 10 hits using synthesizers and electronic beats. He really established that four on the floor beat that we know in techno music today and went on to produce some epic musical scores, including American Gigolo, Scarface, and The NeverEnding Story. Pierre Schaeffer. Pierre Schaeffer is a French composer and musician and is one of the founders of the Music Concrète movement in France. Music Concrete was a really new and innovative way of producing music, where they actually recorded sounds on tape and used those recorded sounds as the raw material to be manipulated musically. These sounds were recorded mostly on tape and were actually manipulated by hand by either making the tape play faster or reverse it or cut it up. This really was the foundation for what we know as sample recording and producing today. Roger Lynn. Roger Lynn actually had a couple of innovations, first being the LM1 in 1980, which is the first ever drum machine to use actual drum samples in its sequence patterns. His second innovation was the Akai MPC in 1988, which is kind of an open source sample controller where the musician could actually put in their own samples and assign them to pads and then play them like a musical instrument. This really opened the doors to a new era of sample-based recording and production. James Duet Yancey. James Duet Yancey, or Jay Dilla, was really a pioneer in sample-based recording and producing. He built on the spirit of the Music Concrete movement, using his Akai MPC to input samples and actually load it into an interface that he could manipulate by hand. By doing this, he was able to actually humanize the sound and actually play these sounds as a percussive instrument in and of itself. 
He used this technique to create some incredible sounds and really pushed hip hop in a new direction. Miles Davis. In the late 60s and the early 70s, Miles Davis really made a shift from traditional instruments into a more electronic feel. This was known as the Miles electronic phase. It started with the album In a Silent Way in 1969 and really progressed with Bitches Brew in 1970. These albums incorporated a lot of breakthrough electronic sounds and instrumentation and really paved the way for the jazz fusion movement. John Chowning. John Chowning was a scientist and engineer who actually developed the algorithm for FM synthesis in 1967. He was widely misunderstood when he initially developed his thesis on the algorithm, due to the fact that most people were really accustomed to analog synthesis at that time. However, his thesis and algorithm did catch the eye of Yamaha, who were yet to really enter the game on synthesizers, and they were able to use that to produce the DX7, which became one of the best-selling synthesizers of all time, and actually harbored an entire wave of FM-driven synthesizers for years to come. Jean-Michel Jarre. Jean-Michel Jarre is really a household name when it comes to ambient synthesizer music. He really pioneered this genre and really pushed it into the mainstream. He was the first Western musician ever invited to the People's Republic of China to actually perform, and he holds the record for the largest audience to ever view a musical concert at 3.5 million in Moscow in 1997. Dieter Dopfer. Dieter Dopfer is actually the father of the Eurorack format. Back in the late 90s, he actually adapted the typical modular format to a smaller form factor that was much more accessible to the average person. And by keeping his designs open sourced, he really contributed to the boom of modular synthesis. Today, there are over 500 manufacturers making thousands of unique synth modules. Tony Rolando. Tony Rolando is the founder of Make Noise, and Make Noise is responsible for some of the best selling and most playable Eurorack modules to date. His company has really introduced a new approach to the layout of the Eurorack format, which kind of combines the East Coast and the West Coast styles, making a really unique system and a new way of approaching synthesis. Richard Devine. Richard Devine is a sound artist, musician, producer, composer, who's really behind a lot of the presets, manuals, loops, sound libraries, and raw elements that composers use and share to produce music today. He's really at the forefront of this new age of sharing loops, sharing presets, and actually working together as a global community. All right, that's about it. Thanks for watching. If I've left anybody out, maybe let me know in the comments below and I'll try to do a follow-up video. And if you liked the video, leave me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot.